Second house is the house of wealth and resources and the sign on the cusp of that house can tell you a lot about your potential job opportunities and what you need to do in order to make the bank. Let's take a closer look and take it through all the rising signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you're new to my channel, or even if you're not, please take a second to show your support by leaving a like or a comment, subscribing and pressing the notification bell. You also have the lovely option of saying thank you by buying me a coffee. I really appreciate everyone who has taken advantage of that. Before we dive in, I am a practicing astrologer and don't only create content for you guys, but I also do readings. If you'd like one, if you want me to look at your chart to give you more insight about what your future has in store or tell you what your natal chart promises and what it's all about, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. It's always a great time to talk to an astrologer, but especially good if you're feeling stuck or stagnant and you'd like some celestial guidance. Additionally, on my website, in the shop section, you can find the variety of magical candles and oils I create. For example, this is my exalted Venus candle. It captures Venus in Pisces, the sign of exaltation. Planets, when they are exalted, they are restricted, but also empowered. So Venus in Pisces is restricted, but I think by a nostalgic, melancholic nature of Pisces, but that actually makes it even more romantic, creative, and charming. So this candle is perfect for anyone who has Pisces placements, anyone who is a Virgo rising, or if you are a Scorpio rising, anyone who's born with Venus in a more difficult position, if your natal Venus is in Virgo, Scorpio, or Aries, if it's locked in a dark house, just kidding, but if it's placed, in the 6th, the 8th, or the 12th houses, because the energy of romance is a bit harder to access in those houses. And if your Venus is making harsh aspects, like a square or an opposition to Saturn, Mars, Uranus, or Pluto, because that may make your romantic life a little bit harder. And you can see that it's really beautiful. It is green, the color of Venus. It is decorated with aquamarine stone. There are seven of them, which is the number of Venus and it has a beautiful soothing energy. Definitely check out my website. And if you like some advice, if you want some advice in terms of which candle is best for you, you can also leave a comment telling me your sun, moon, and rising, and I can give you some suggestions. So how does this video work? I am going to talk about rising signs. I work in whole sign. So in whole sign, if you're an Aries rising, your second house will always be Taurus, no matter if you're rising is it one degree or two degrees, but you can also, let's say you don't work in whole sign, you work in Placidus, you can also listen and check out the timestamps for the sign specifically. For example, if you are in Placidus, your second house might, may contain more than one sign. So what might work better for you is to listen to both of those signs and figure it out. If you do not know your rising sign or you do not know how to tell which sign is in your second house, check out the calculator down below, get your rising sign and definitely listen for that. Okay, so let's start off with Aries rising. If you are in Aries rising, your second house will be Taurus and we're talking about the best ways for you to make money. So Aries risings tend to be very kind of like slow, steady, productive. They may enjoy working with their hands um, or do a job that involves their body, right? Taurus is very kind of like methodical. It craves, it wants to like create something. It wants to leave something behind. So something like tangible. I can also see Taurus people using their voice professionally. So being a singer is maybe the option for some of you, especially let's say you have Venus and Taurus and Mercury and Taurus. You're sort of meant to be the beautiful mermaid singer. Um, but yeah, like, like kind of doing work that is very like hands-on, very involved, very sort of, you know, like you can touch things. Taurus is very like sensual, so you maybe need to touch people. So like being a masseuse 
or even being, I know, an Aries rising who used to be a surgeon. It's also Taurus is a very creative sign, right? So if you're second house, you're Aries rising, your second house is Taurus, you may find yourself doing work that is creative. So maybe you're working in television or you're working in some kind of like museum or dealing with art, buying, selling art. There's also love for like good smells, good sights, good tastes. So I can also see some working in like beauty industry or fashion industry. Um, Taurus is another like sign there that is very sort of financially oriented. So for others, you may find yourself kind of excelling in finance or in banking. Even like working in agriculture or real estate is quite a good possibility or like, you know, design, landscaping, architecture, anything like that. And a lot will also depend, of course, on the rest of your chart as with everything else. But if you are sort of, you know, if you're not struggling financially, let's say you're quite like good, then you have family support or you're, you've inherited a bunch of money or you made a bunch of money, you're also, you may find a lot of satisfaction in like volunteering or doing type of charity work and maybe, but I can also see, I can also see very much like, you know, slow, steady, like gardening, perfecting something, working in like beautiful scenery, uh, surrounded by like birds and butterflies. Let me know how this resonates. What do you do professionally? Does this describe you perhaps? And if you're curious to, for me to read your chart, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, if you are a Taurus rising, for Taurus risings in whole sign, which is what I work with, your second house is Gemini. Gemini is curious. Gemini is restless. You need a job that will stimulate your mind and stimulate your curiosity and will give you a variety of experiences. Gemini's, Gemini is the sign of the twins, right? So if you're a Taurus rising, no matter how like stable you are as a Taurus rising and just sort of slow and steady, you need variety. You need change in your career. You almost you know, here we're talking specifically about how you make money, but like it also applies to your career. And of course, everything will depend on the rest of the chart, but you need that sort of social element. You need that element of like, you may have duality. So like make money through two different ways, like have a finance job, but then also be a social media influencer on the side or be like a yoga teacher and have a job in finance, right? Like as a Taurus sort of good with money and good at teaching other people how to do money. But yeah, duality is quite likely doing two things. You have this good understanding of how to get along with people, how to, you know, connect with people. You're quite social. Always a career that has mercurial element to it or a job that has mercurial elements. So writing, speaking, journalism, maybe even sales or travel industry is quite likely. Another possibility is being a comedian, right? Because sort of quick-wittedness, fast-paced nature of Gemini will show up in your professional life. So if you are fast-paced and you are good at making jokes, then it's quite likely that you can make money from that. Um, you may also enjoy performing. So once again, that sort of shape-shifting quality, um, maybe teaching, definitely working in sales, definitely doing work that involves some kind of like public relations, even work that involves numbers, right? Like being a programmer, programmer or like um, some kind of like accountant, less so. I feel like that's more so for like Leo Risings maybe, but yeah, definitely like careers where you get to use words or you use your, you get to use your hands or you use your like quick wit as well. Let me know how this resonates. And if you want to know more, you want me to look at your chart, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are a Gemini rising, your second house is Cancer. I work in whole sign. So in whole sign, it is Cancer. And if your second house is Cancer, you make money through being nurturing. You have this power to make other people feel safe. You have the power to 
connect with others, right? As a Gemini rising, you're really good at getting along with people. You have, you're likely also someone who has strong intuition and can intuitively sort of make professional moves as well. So, you know, when, it, when we're talking about intuition, maybe you're doing work that is, that sort of like requires some kind of like public relations or advertisement. You do need to use your intuition and advertisement to know what, what to invest to, what not to invest to. But it will always have an element of like care and, and taking care of other people. So being a manager, right? Being a boss, being a chef, being a social worker are some possibilities here. And then of course, as a Gemini rising, your 10th house is also Pisces. So there's also that element of like intuition, nurture, care for other people. Um, food can play a big part, you know, as once again, maybe you're cooking or you're, you have a catering business or you deliver food. Um, cancers have that natural power to like make, feel, make people feel support it so i can also see you doing like an interior design helping people feel like welcome in their own home um and healing for sure healing or some kind of like guiding teaching supporting other people you may enjoy work that serves the public that encourages like you know other people um cancer is also very much connected to like elderly sick poor old um, which is the same as elderly children, mothers. So doing work that involves that, you know, like being a children's doctor or a children's teacher or like a social worker is quite likely here. Let me know how this resonates. What do you do for a living if you are a Gemini rising? I can also see, you know, I can also see like an imaginative career for a Gemini rising as well because like cancer, I think it's not. People don't talk about it often enough, but it's, so many writers have cancer placements. So you can also, as a Gemini rising, you can also be like a writer and have a creative career for sure. If you want to know more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, if you are a cancer rising, for cancer risings, their second house is Leo. I work in whole sign, so that is the case. That is, you know, for all cancer risings in whole sign, their second house will always be Leo. So for Cancer Risings, Leo is the second house and you need a career, you need a job. You will likely make money by being visible, by being generous, by being charming and humorous. Like it's crazy, right? Because like you see Cancer Risings and you're like, oh, they're so soft and squishy and like protective and sort of a little bit in their shell, but like they make money by being visible and like you know their house of career the 10th house is Aries so they show up as these like sources of light for other people so as a Leo you will always need to do work that lets you be the source of light for other people even if it's literally you turn light for other people but I can see this as a teacher I can see this as a fitness instructor actor social media influencer someone who like has their own business someone who shares knowledge, shares advice. Um, it's also a very creative career, potentially. You need to do what you love. You need to enjoy what you do. You have strong leadership skills, so you're quite likely to be in charge of a lot of people or, you know, in charge of a team, maybe. Um, and other careers, so like anywhere where you get to assert your authority, anywhere where you get to be visible, so like teacher, fitness trainer, government, even like someone who has a business and does sales or acting um, is a possibility too. Let me know how this resonates. What do you do? If you're curious to know more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, if you are a Leo rising and your second house in that case would be Virgo. I work in whole sign. So for, for Leo risings and whole sign, second house is Virgo. Leo risings need to do work that is helpful. They just can't help themselves. They need to sort of, you know, support other people. So Virgo has that kind of tendency to improve the world. So professionally, they might be doing something that is improving the lives of other people, even if it's some kind of document analysis, right? Like some kind of management of things. 
very natural healers too, even if they're trying to heal through their words. So having a job that involves fitness, wellness, um, nutrition, diet, like anything like that, I think is quite likely for Leo Risings or work that is like, once again, somehow like serves people, even if that means like feeding other people. Uh, they have strong analytical skills and a lot of times are good with numbers. So Leo Risings, you might not think that, but you know, second house of money and values, Virgo, they can be quite, quite sort of good with that. Um, so I can also see some of them working in accounting or working in finance, being like a financial advisor or doing work that requires sort of organizing things, making lists, making plans. So you can do a lot of different things while doing that, right? Like maybe as a Leo rising, you're very creative, but then your work requires organizational analytical skills. Of course, Mercury rules Virgo. So you may also be the one who um, writes, maybe edits something, maybe like a publisher or an editor, um, a researcher, right? Like a therapist too, somebody who like takes knowledge, sort of looks at the person's head and helps them put things together, helps them improve themselves. So very much work that improves the world. Maybe you see, you see that something's missing, right? Like you go to Hawaii, you find out that they're missing a club that you want to offer and you decide to bring that to them. So I think behind that Leo desire to be like in the spotlight and to be visible, there's very much the desire to be helpful. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes they don't make, they don't sort of crave the spotlight as one would imagine, but they more want a job that um, helps make the world better. You can also see them being like, you know, working with books, working in like medical field and maybe like even you know sort of science research type oriented career is also quite likely let me know how this resonates what do you do for a living and if you're curious to know more book a reading on my website anastasiadesastrology.com if you are a virgo rising in whole sign your second house would be libra you can also listen to this if your second house contains some libra in it so virgo risings are more likely to have a career that is creative. Libra is Venus ruled, so it's very artistic. It has strong, a strong sense of aesthetics and balance and putting colors and shapes together. So maybe you are a graphics designer. Maybe you are a social media content creator and you use your keen aesthetic sense to put things and present them to people. You're likely to do work that creates balance. So you can be a diplomat, a peacemaker, somebody who other people come to and you end, end up resolving their conflicts. Your job may involve a lot of sort of relationship knowledge. So being a relationship counselor is another possibility here. Um, work that is done in partnership, work that is done with a team is quite likely, you know, writing, creating, making art are all possibilities here because Libra has to do with beauty and other people. I can also see you maybe working in like, you know, even possibly finance, but I feel like maybe it's some kind of like negotiating or something like that. Definitely see, definitely see like doing work that involves peacemaking, diplomacy, helping people get along, creating, maybe making music, maybe making art, uh, maybe dealing with beauty, like, you know, design, anything like that is a possibility here. Yeah, so being like a counselor is quite likely where you're asserting yourself and showing yourself through helping other people get along. Let me know how this resonates. What do you do for a living if you are a Virgo rising? And if you're curious to know more about your chart, your personality, your future, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, if you are a Libra rising, if you are a Libra rising, your second house is Scorpio, and this is me and you and us. So Scorpio is mysterious, right? Scorpio is private. Scorpio is very intuitive. So doing work that is mysterious, 
that you're maybe private about. Uh, the work where you use your intuition is quite likely. So this could range from being, um, I don't know, like a, an investigator, a researcher, or like journalist, a cop who goes undercover, something like that. You need to be deeply involved with your job. You need to feel passionate about it and you're quite likely to feel passionate about it. It could, it's very good for being a healer. You know, I'm an astrologer. I think it has healing powers to it for sure because definitely that sort of dig deep into something. It has the element of like mystery and mysticism and like astrology is a science that a lot of people like that sort of, you know, is misunderstood maybe. And it's, it's for some people is a taboo because their religion doesn't allow it. So astrology has a lot of these sort of like taboo elements to it, right? So doing work that helps other people. Scorpio is a sign of transformation. So you may be transforming your career yourself. I've, you know, studied information security, then I studied business, and I studied film production, then I worked as a video editor, and now I do astrology full time, and I don't think I'm done. I think there's going to be more things. So constantly evolving, constantly transforming, constantly changing, helping other people change. So being a therapist, being an astrologer, being a consultant, being a private investigator, being a sex worker. For some people, Scorpio is very sexual, so doing work that involves intimacy is quite likely to also work that requires a lot of research right i have a friend who's a libra rising with scorpio mars and saturn in the second house and of course planets in the second house will change things so you always need to look at the entire chart that's where astrologers come in so book a reading on my website and the station is astrology.com but she She's a decorator for TV and film. And so she does a lot of research and putting things together and then like destroying sets and rebuilding them. So literally sort of transformation in terms of career already. So yeah, really good at psychology, may face professional crisis and transform, shed the old, become the new. You can be a healer, you can be a detective, you can also be an actor because you're potentially very good at getting in touch with your feelings. You can also work in finance just because of that ability to sort of dig deep and see the truth and use your intuition to guide you. Or, you know, definitely an investigator, a researcher, some kind of like, like detective type energy I can see here. If you are a Scorpio rising, your second house in whole sign, which is the system I use, is Sagittarius. So Scorpio rising, as mysterious and as brooding as they are professionally, they need freedom. They need adventure. They need growth and expansion. So you would be somebody who wants to have their own schedule, maybe wants to have a job that lets you travel, a job that lets you deal with foreign people. So, you know, like a job that keeps keeps sort of keeps you on your toes, keeps you excited. It's a fire sign. So you need you need stimulation. You need a challenge, I think, on many levels. You need knowledge. So being a teacher or a preacher is quite likely. Even if you're not like classically a teacher or a preacher, right? You're still likely to be someone who like has insights about certain things and maybe you're training your colleagues or you're training um maybe you're training your bosses but definitely some kind of element of like guiding inspiring teaching other people so traveling too right like being a travel blogger having a travel agency helping people book their travel um Doing work that is also, I think, like physically demanding because Sagittarius tends to be quite sort of physically active because it's the sign, the fiery sign that is adventurous, goes on, goes on adventures a lot. But yeah, like so, so, you know, I can see you being, um, being maybe like a teacher, being a travel agent, being somebody who also wants more freedom at work somebody who inspires other people through their knowledge, somebody who shares their wisdom. So it could also even be like, you know, like politics or 
or even like sales or acting where you get to inspire people by sharing your knowledge and sharing your wisdom and kind of telling them what to do, guiding them into the right direction. You may also work with the public or work with other people and do kind of use do work that is like helping other people. Also Sagittarius is known for the sense of humor, so I wonder if for some of you there are opportunities to be like comedians or to use humor professionally. Let me know how this resonates. Obviously keep in mind that having planets in the second house will change things. And if you're curious to know more, book a reading on my website, anastasiadesastrology.com. If you are a Sagittarius rising, your second house and whole sign system, which is what I use, is Capricorn. So even though you are this adventurous, playful, humorous, and non-unconventional person, right? Non-conformist on many levels. Professionally, you need stability. You may actually have a job that requires you to know laws and regulations. Capricorn is very much about tradition, so upholding tradition on some level, like doing work that requires knowledge of the laws, of the regulations, the rules, the structures, the sort of old way of doing things. And on some level, keeping it up, right? You're also likely to be very hardworking, very patient and ambitious, sort of unafraid to work hard. It may take you longer to get recognition, but not impossible, right? You have this like, people trust you on many levels. They trust you with their money maybe. So you're maybe in finance. Um, they may trust you with their secrets. So you can also be a therapist, but like somehow you have this like, traditional kind of like manager who helps people, who keeps people in check, who knows the rules, right? So being a manager, being financial consultant, being working for the government, because that would also feed your desire for adventure, right? Your desire for success. Your house of career, your 10th house is Virgo, which is also a sign of being like, you know, being very professionally oriented, being kind of hardworking and, and earthy and grounded professionally. So like you may be very realistic when it comes to your job versus very adventurous and kind of open-minded and optimistic when it comes to everything else. Having a business is likely doing something that requires, you know, maybe using your intuition. Capricorn can be quite intuitive too, especially when it comes to like money-making opportunities. But yeah, for sure that job that like upholds tradition, upholds convention, um, lets you boss people around, right? Lets you tell people what to do. Um, lets you be authority as well and lets you kind of climb the ladder and get to the position of power is likely. And you wouldn't, for the most part, you wouldn't feel bad about it taking time. And it should take time because if you truly want to be empowered, you need to gather the knowledge that helps you get there. If you want to know more, if you want me to look at your natal chart and tell you what's ahead or describe what I see in it, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Now, if you are a Capricorn rising, your second house of money is Aquarius. And I use whole signs. So for me, all Capricorn risings will set, have second house in Aquarius. But if you work in Placidus, listen to that and maybe something else. So Capricorn has this reputation of like very hardworking, very traditional, very conservative. But professionally, your second house is Aquarius. So you're meant to be unconventional. You're meant to be open-minded. You're meant to do something unique and quirky and different. It's almost like you know the tradition so well so that you can break away from them, from it, right? You know the rules so you can break away from them. So you have this unique, original opinion on things. You have this independent head on your shoulders. And so you want to do work that allows you to do new things. So your job may involve social media, it may involve technology, it may involve new ways of thinking, de do dealing and doing things, dealing with and doing things. You're like a natural reformator. No, I don't think that's the word, reformer, right? Um, rebel, somebody who changes things, somebody who is like the leader than the world needs. And of course, this could be much smaller where you just sort of 
pioneer a new technology in your firm or you come into the firm and you're like, okay, we should probably do social media now. And they're like, no, never. And you help them, you bring them into the future. Or it could be much bigger. It could be you uniting two different schools of thought or like making, you know, uniting therapy with um, music and becoming, that's probably already done, but like using it, uh, like sharing your unique genius basically in a very like personal, innovative way. And you may feel professionally, you may feel like an outsider a little bit because maybe you're doing things differently. Maybe you are working five jobs or you are, you know, you have like an unconventional, unconventional work life and other people might judge you. And so wherever we have Aquarius, we feel like a little bit, you know, we feel like outsiders. So do not feel bad about that. Just learn to appreciate your unique genius and run with it. Some Capricorn Risings can be influential sort of politicians. They can be successful teachers. They can be you know, people who make progress happen and there is multiple ways to do that. So let me know how this resonates and let me know what you do for a living. If you want to know more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are an Aquarius rising, your second house is Pisces. So when it comes to money, you're a little bit more go with the flow. You are very kind of dreamy when it comes to resources and you may use that and your imagination to make money through writing to make money through social causes right pisces will always want to do work that helps other people um you prefer potentially to have your free space your free time to be more a little bit like free flowing you know kind of yeah have that ability go with the flow and perhaps I can see you doing very creative work. I can also see you doing work that is healing and helpful. So like being a teacher potentially, right? Being a healer potentially, being a therapist, being a musician is quite likely. Um, there might be a sense of like early in life, you may be struggling a little bit. A lot would depend on your natal Jupiter. If your Jupiter is in Sagittarius or Pisces, that's beautiful, but if your Jupiter is maybe like in Capricorn or if it's in um, Virgo or Gemini, maybe things take a little bit longer to develop. But yeah, like jobs that give you freedom, that allow your imagination to run wild, that encourage you to use your intuition, that encourage kind of work that helps other people, heals other people, would bring you a lot of a lot of satisfaction. Of course, a lot will depend on your entire chart. If you have other planets, if you have Jupiter and Capricorn ruling your second house, you're not likely to just be happy with free-flowing imaginative work. You might want to be more successful. That's why it is recommended to look at your entire chart. And you can always do that on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. And let me know how this resonates. What do you do for a living? Beautiful Aquarius rising. Now, if you are a Pisces rising, your second house is Aries. So Pisces rising is very interesting. I think it's actually the case for most signs because there is quite a significant jump from the rising sign to the second house to, yeah, to the second house. And I use whole sign. So if you're a Pisces rising in whole sign, Aries will always be your second house. But if you don't use Placidus, you can listen to Aries and to something else to kind of mix the two. So you're a Pisces rising, you're dreamy, you are imaginative, you're sensitive and empathetic, right? But your second house is Aries. Your second house is very masculine. It's a go-getter energy. It's an independent energy. So you need independence. You may enjoy working solitary, whether that means you just do your work best without supervision, or that means you have a business that, you know, that depends. Aries likes to start new things. So starting a business, helping people start new things, guiding people, even being the person who comes up with a lot of ideas because Aries doesn't always have follow through. So, you know, maybe professionally, you're really good at starting things and coming up with ideas, but like execution, you'd rather leave for somebody else. And of course, a lot would depend on the rest of your chart. So if you want a full look, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. So Pisces Risings can be business owners, 
can also be people who are like fighting for a living. Aries is very like, you know, fight oriented. So being a lawyer, being like um, a social worker or being doing work that requires like action and leadership is quite likely here. You may be a professional athlete. Oh, yes, like let's say your Mars is an Aries or you are, you sort of, yeah, like a fighter, maybe an athlete or a fighter, a business owner, firefighter, somebody who like works with metals, someone who maybe shapes people like, you know, you can f shape a metal, beat the metal into shape or you can beat the person into shape by being a fitness instructor. Um being a politician. I'm just thinking of things where you get to like sort of argue and assert yourself and be a leader. And those are definitely possibilities. So even if even if you don't fight for a living, you may still encounter sort of like making money through some kind of fights. Like maybe there is maybe you're a diplomat, but you're like dealing with other people fighting or you have colleagues that are sort of fighting and you're trying to navigate those dynamics. Let me know how this resonates. And once again, you can book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com if you want to know more. And I hope this video was helpful. If you have any other ideas, if you want me to highlight a different house on a chart, for example, we can talk about the house of career and give you a better, fuller perspective. So this way you can compare the second house with the 10th house, or you want to know about children, um, I'm here to help you figure it out. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.